comrades, I'm Elizabeth, a correspondent for the Revolution Report. On February 19th, I was in Washington, D.C. for the Rage Against the War Machine rally. I met up with folks from the Party of Communists USA, the American Student Union, Women for Racial and Economic Equality, and the Movement for People's Democracy. Of course, it wasn't only communists at the rally. Over a thousand people from different political backgrounds showed up at the Lincoln Memorial. Some were socialists, but others were anarchists, libertarians, or paleoconservatives. We managed to put our differences aside for the day to unite against the military-industrial complex and CIA. We also enjoyed live music and heard some great speeches from opponents of the U.S. proxy war against Russia and Ukraine. Speakers included three former U.S. presidential candidates, Tulsi Gabbard, Ron Paul, and Dennis Kucinich, as well as comedian Jimmy Dore, Pink Floyd's Roger Waters, editor of The Gray Zone Max Blumenthal, and more. Before we all marched to the White House, I asked some participants in the rally why they came out and for their thoughts on the conflict in Ukraine. Why'd you come to this rally? Uh, I came to this rally to oppose nuclear war and not to have my entire generation become thermonuclear ash. That's a, it's a pretty good reason to attend the rally. Yeah, indeed. Uh, what are your thoughts on the conflict in Ukraine? Well, I think the Ukrainian government got overthrown by a bunch of fascists in 2014, and I think the Russia is seeking a new security architecture in Europe and isn't going to accept a bunch of people who love Stefan Bandera and love Nazis on their border. So that's why I think of the conflict. So what brings you to this rally? I'm here to stop the, the march towards World War III and nuclear Armageddon. Definitely a good reason to attend. Um, what are your thoughts on the conflict in Ukraine? Oh, uh, well, I hope it stops immediately. It's something I've followed since the very beginning. Um, it's not just a war in Ukraine. It's uh, it's part of a broader, uh, broader efforts of imperialism to keep the world locked down in their system. And it's just the hottest front in that war. And it's uh, escalated to a point where it's sort of make or break for the empire. So, um, and they know that. Everyone in the world knows it, whether they're on the side of the empire or against it. So what brings you to this rally? Uh, I am a peace activist and I am trying to spread uh, peace literature to uh, people here at the rally. Um, uh, my name is Will Hobson. I'm the vice chair of the Libertarian Party of Oregon. I'm giving out anti-war books for kids. Uh, the Butter Battle book is a uh, fantastic Cold War allegory. Uh, talks about propaganda, talks about nationalism. It also covers mutually assured destruction. I think a lot of people could stand to read this book, probably a lot of adults. Uh, and I'm also giving out yeah, you know, some other liberty uh, literature and stuff like Frederick Bastiat's The Law. Uh, yeah, yeah this is, it's really important to me that we uh, live in a peaceful world. And I'm trying to help build the anti war movement here in the United States. Yeah, absolutely. So, what are your thoughts on the conflict in Ukraine? Um, I think it's very tragic that uh, two state actors are using their soldiers uh, as pawns and that uh, they're being destroyed. Uh, I think that it's always sad that there's the human loss of life. There's almost always usually an option that results uh, in the uh, less loss of life. And I think that would be, in this case, through diplomacy. I definitely respect people standing up for themselves and using self-defense. But the problem is that both sides are engaged in this, uh, mandatory conscription, which is basically a form of murder slavery uh, that results in being dead. And I think everyone has a right to flee to safety with their family if, it's, if that's their choice. So what brings you to this rally? Okay, it's like 12, it's right before the speakers start here. And I'm here so we can stop World War III. And that means we've got to mobilize this rally and many, many more bigger and bigger and bigger rallies and actually get the world population standing up and saying, we don't want to be blown up. And if we can get that, then we can get people to collaborate around a future. We can get cooperation with Russia, China, India, and the BRICS Plus generally. So that's what I'm about. Yeah, that's great. I'm so the, what are your hey, thoughts the on the conflict guy? in Ukraine? Right here. Uh, well, it, this is all... Uh, very, uh, we're getting out a statement from Helga Zeppelarouche. I'm with the Schiller Institute. I'm Daniel Burke. And it's called The Age of Reason or the Annihilation of Mankind. Her point right off the bat is that 
We have to stop the weapons going into Ukraine because it's very easy for this to escalate to the danger of uh, nuclear war, right, as I was saying. If we want to stop the weapons, we got to take an opportunity that's been given us by Cy Hirsch, by coming forward with the Nord Stream uh, uh, you know, revelation. There was a big rally in Munich yesterday with over 10,000 people there who were actually standing up as Germans and saying we're against this. So we need to keep mobilizing like that. We need to get more people to recognize not just the simple platitudes like there's, you know, our money is going over to, 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 to war, which it is, but that's not enough. We need to recognize that now the system is collapsing, and that's why they're going for this disgusting war to attack and destroy Russia. NATO's trying to completely destroy Russia. We can't, we, it's, it's because they don't have any other option because their system is failing. Ukraine has been going kind of in chaos since 2014. This war has been going on since 2014. Ukraine escalated it and then Russia retaliated. And then Russia's retaliation is the only thing we're being told about. And so, oh, they started this war. That's not what happened. And so the point is Russia, China, Iran, Syria, Venezuela, they are not our enemies just because they're competing with American oil companies and whatnot. And we want more peace and solidarity. So what brings you to this rally? I uh, just want to stop the war and stop uh, NATO expansion and U.S. aggression in Eastern Europe uh, and what I would call the cultural colonization of Eastern Europe by the West. Uh, yeah, and also stop spending our tax dollars on the war machine and making Raytheon, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop, and United Technologies uh, rich. Yeah, while our country falls apart, as yeah. you saw with the train, and, yeah. it's freaking 60 degrees and uh, 60 degrees every day in February, but we're spending 10 million dollars per missile or whatever, you know, blowing people up in Ukraine in a war that we basically started. So. Yeah, definitely. So, what are your thoughts on the conflict in Ukraine? Um, I think it's definitely caused by NATO expansion and. Like I said, I really view it as like the West uh, colonizing the Russian sphere of not only sphere of influence in geopolitical terms, but really the cultural heartland of Russia. And I think the West wants to break up Russia as a geopolitical entity so it could never pose a threat to Western hegemony. And it also significantly weakened China if they managed to balkanize Russia. Um, so yeah, I think it's very, very clearly calculated and deliberate. Um, you know, U.S. geostrategic, uh, long-term, you know, multi-year, multi-decade even operation that's, that's been fomenting for a long time. So what brings you to this rally? Well, um, I, along many other people, are kind of sick of the United States constantly meddling in other countries, using our resources while our country is crippling in every other, you know, facet and industry. I live in New York City where egg prices are $6.00 a month just to feed your family. The trains are falling apart. It takes half an hour to get to work where it should be five dollars in one of the rich five minutes in one of the richest cities in the world. Rents have nearly doubled or gone up a hundred percent in certain areas. Meanwhile our government doesn't care about you know putting industry or putting investments into our society, instead giving billions of dollars to the most corrupt country in the world, which is Ukraine, which has been ridden by a fascist uh, junta that's been there since 2014. So I along many thousands of other people are here to say that we don't support it. We are the American people, this is our money and our resources, and we demand that our country represent us and not foreign interests in Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely. So what are your thoughts on the conflict in Ukraine? I mean, I, I, like I said before, Ukraine is a government, is a country that's been riddled with fascism in literally every aspect of its society, from its patriotic education system, where it's literally inbreeding and creating a fascist you know, youth that's streamlined later on into the military. The military is run by fascists like Valery Zaluzhny, uh, Dmitry Yarosh, uh, obviously this political state, and don't get me started on its church, the Catholic Church is, have, has been historically very aligned with the far-right movement in Ukraine, starting back from the OUN, um, even later earlier than that. But also, this is, just represents NATO's interest in Ukraine so that it can get closer into Russia and you know, turn all these countries into vassal states to be used for uh, Western elite you know, privatization and exploitation. So I think it's, it's just an, it's, it's a greatest example that capitalism just creates war and destruction. Meanwhile, when you look at the Soviet Union, Ukraine and Russia were in solidarity together. Ukraine and Russia were extremely rich. Ukraine was the second richest.
richest, the strongest economy in the Soviet Union, and they did not have war. They had peace with their with their brothers, their historical brother group. Um, and that's under socialism. So it's very obvious to see that capitalism just brings war, death, destruction, and exploitation, while socialism is the answer to peace and prosperity. As you can see. People had different reasons for coming to the rally, but we all united behind the same demands. One, not one more penny for war in Ukraine. Two, negotiate peace. Three, stop the war inflation. Four, disband NATO. Five, global nuclear de-escalation. Six, slash the Pentagon budget. Seven, abolish the CIA and military industrial deep state. Eight, Abolish war and empire. 9. Restore civil liberties. 10. Free Julian Assange. We're marching to the White House now. Got my American State Union flag. Here with my wonderful comrade. It's amazing. And I'm here with many other people. It's great to see everyone out here. No to NATO! 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 Hey Joe, we're like gonna wake you up from your nap! <laughs> we are here at Sleepy Joe's house, everybody. There he is. Yeah, the fence in front of the White House really just shows how how much of a vibrant democracy we are. The president is so hated that they have to put him behind those tall fences. Rage Against the War Machine shows that the American anti-war movement is not dead. Sure, most of the liberal left in the U.S. have turned into the bloodthirsty neocons they hated like two decades ago, but we don't need them. The longer they continue to support literal Nazis to stick it to Putin, the more they will expose themselves as opportunists, not to be trusted. Anyways, looks like I got my weekly check from the Kremlin, so I'm off for my usual evening spa and sushi. Hey comrades, thanks for checking out our video about the Rage Against the War Machine protest. We hope you liked it, and if you did, please give it a like, share it around, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and please share this content around so as many people as possible can see it. Don't forget to check us out on Telegram, Instagram, and Twitter as well. The links are in the description. But if you're ready to go that extra leap for the Revolution Report, please consider becoming a patron of the channel. There's a bunch of different perks, including, but not limited to, having your name read out at the end of our videos. So without further ado, we want to give a very big thank you to our rank-and-file revolutionaries. Fyodor, Jesse Toma Alkuri, Michael Iverson, Tara Mackin, Edward, Daniel Hemphill, Irf, Grame Briggs-White, Robert George, Indestructible Living, John Beckett, Chris Casseroles, and Oitz. We also have one Commissar. We want to also give a big thank you to Roger Asai, and an enormous thank you to our General Secretaries, Slava and Dylan Orris. So once again, comrades, thank you very much for watching. We hope to see you in the next video, and Workers of the World Unite.